Okay, in this concept video, the learning objectives are one. We introduce the idea of an account, which we use in order to classify and store accounting information. And then we look at the effects of business transaction in terms of debits and credits to these different accounts. So there are some new terms here which we'll be introducing. To begin with, an account is part of the accounting system that we use to classify and summarize increases, decreases, and the balance of each asset, liability, shareholder's equity item, dividend, revenue, and expense. Companies set up these different business accounts, such as cash and accounts receivable. Every business has a cash account in their accounting system because it's essential that they know how much cash is on hand. Now, to illustrate recording increases or decreases in account, think of uh, a capital T. And uh, that's what it is. We use what are called T accounts. Now, the top of the T account we call the name. There's the left side and the right side. So, therefore, we name the account cash, and we also record increases on one side of the vertical T and decreases on the other side of the vertical T. Now, accountants use the term debit. Instead of saying, place the entry on the left side of the T account. And we use the term credit. Instead of saying, place the entry on the right side of the T account. So debit, abbreviated as a DR, simply means left side. And a credit simply means right side. Now, this comes, debit means left in 14th century Italian language. And credit means right. Now, I know credit come into the English language. There's good credit and bad credit and all of that. But don't even think of it that way. Credit simply means right-hand side. That's how the accountants talk. Thus, for all accounts, a debit entry is an entry made on the left-hand side. And a credit entry is, a credit, is an entry made on the right-hand side for the account. So after we analyze a business transaction and we determine the increases or decreases and how those increases and decreases affect these different accounts of the business, then we translate the increase and decrease into debits and credits. Now keep in mind, in each business transaction, we record the total dollar amount of debits must equal the total dollar amount of credits. If we debit one account for, say, $100, we must credit another account for $100 equal. Okay, because we're talking about each transaction. And recall a transaction is an exchange. Two accounts are affected, but they're affected in such a way that the accounting equation remains in balance. We demonstrated that in week one recording transactions. So, by translating them into debits and credits, then we're going to say that this double, double entry system is such that every entry of a business transaction has equal debits and equal credits. And this double entry procedure keeps the accounting equation in balance. Now, you simply have to understand this in order to proceed in accounting. We record transactions in a T account. Now, it's easier if we focus on the equal sign here. You notice that the assets are on the left-hand side of the equal sign. Liabilities and shareholders' equity or stockholders' equity are on the right-hand side. So, therefore, the rules are going to be simply this. That if a transaction increases an asset, we are going to record it on the debit side of that asset, that particular asset. If a transaction increases a liability account, such as accounts payable, then we will record that on the credit side. And if a transaction affects a shareholder's equity or stockholder's equity account, such that it increases that equity account, we record it on the right-hand side. So we have lefts over here, and rights over there. So they're opposite. Increases on the left of assets, increases on the right of liability shareholders' equity. 
Now, the decreases are obviously the opposite here. If a transaction decreases an asset, it's where we record it. We're not going to record plus or minuses, increases or decreases. We're going to record it on the right-hand side of that particular asset, whether it be cash or accounts receivable or what have you. If a transaction decreases a liability, like accounts payable or notes payable, we're going to record that decrease on the left-hand side or the debit side. And if a transaction reduces shareholders' equity, they are going to record that on the left-hand side. Okay, so assets increase by debits and decrease by credits. Liabilities increase by credits and decrease by debits. Okay, and when we apply these rules, we have equal lefts, rights, equal debits, credits. We should always be in balance. Okay, let's apply this now, debit and credit rule. Assume a corporation issues shares of its capital stock for 10000 well, two accounts are affected, cash and common stock. The company now has 10000 in cash, so its cash account has gone up. And cash is an asset account, so I, increase, I record that increase on the left-hand side of cash. And we've issued common stock, so our shareholders' equity has also increased. And an increase in shareholders' equity is recorded on the right-hand side of that account. So the account is called common stock, and we record the increase on the right-hand side. We have equal left and equal right. This transaction increases asset, which is recorded on the left, hands on. Now, assume a company borrowed 5000 from the bank on a note. The amount owed either when demanded um, by a specific date. The firm records the transaction as following. Well, we we now have five thousand more in cash, so our cash account goes up by five thousand. So I debit cash five thousand. My liability account also goes up because now I owe the bank a note's payable. They can call at any time, and so therefore I record the increase on my liability account on the right hand side. Now, extending this to revenue, expense, and dividend accounts is even easier. Revenues is what we earn by providing our product or service. And revenues can only increase. There's never decreases in revenue. And so, therefore, on our revenue account, we record all increases on the right-hand side. So, therefore, if I earn 10000 in cash... Cash would go up 10000 which is over here, and revenue would also go up, and we record it over here, okay? By the same token, expenses. Expenses decrease retained earnings, and so therefore a decrease in retained earnings is on the left-hand side, because a decrease in retained earnings decreases shareholders' equity. And therefore, I always record expenses on the left-hand side, and the same goes for dividends. And I showed you that before, that we debit um, salary expense, for example, and we credit cash. Oops, forgive me, I didn't show it to you yet. Okay, we're going to illustrate that now, the cash account is an asset, so therefore let's say that this company provided services for a thousand in cash. Well, we record the thousand over here and we earned revenue. Anytime we earn revenue we record the revenue right on the right hand side. Left, right. Always in balance. Now assume we paid 600 in salaries to employees. All right, sorry about that. And the salary expense would go up. Well, salary expense always goes up. And I paid cash, so it would be a credit to cash and a debit to salary expense. Now, dividends decrease retained earnings. So if a firm paid 2000 in dividends, well, their cash account would go down. So that's a credit to cash. 
and their dividend account would go up because it reduces retained earnings. Now to determine the balance of any T account, total debits, so you take the balance, let's say cash, okay, and we had a thousand here, we had two thousand here, and we had three thousand here, and we had a thousand over here. Well, what you do is you add up the debits, and we've got uh, six thousand debits minus one thousand credits, so we say that cash has a debit balance of five thousand. On a liability account, let's say accounts payable. All right. Accounts payable, I had a thousand and I borrowed, I owed another two thousand and I paid off five hundred. So therefore, I have three thousand this side, five hundred on that. So I rate the balance as a credit balance of twenty five hundred. And that's how we use debits and credits uh, to do that. Now, we're going to make the system even simpler in the next. Uh, concept video, we're going to introduce the journal and the ledger.